Some cars are named after beautiful women, like the Mercedes-Benz, while some are named after majestic animals, like the Jaguar. But this Lamborghini variant was named after a fighting bull in Zaragoza. Since 2011, the Aventador has been the flagship car of Lamborghini, displacing the Murcielago, and for good reason, too. With each new Aventador released, the Lamborghini brand has shown that it is a step ahead of other car manufacturers, producing supercars for road users. There have been 19 Aventador vehicles, with the 20th expected before the end of 2022. In addition to being aesthetically pleasing, the Aventador is as much a raging beast as the bull it was named for. This masterpiece has gone on to inspire many other cars within the Lamborghini franchise, and even in other manufacturers' franchises as well. That's why, in today's video, we'll be looking at the Aventador's amazing run as Lamborghini's flagship supercar and the best cars that have been released over the years. The Aventador LP700-4 was Lamborghini's first Aventador vehicle, designed by Filippo Perini. It was first showcased in 2010 in Santa Gata Bolognese and was successfully launched five months later, in February 2011. The first Aventador featured a new Lamborghini engine, the Lamborghini 700 PS V12 engine, which has now become commonplace in Aventadors and other Lamborghini vehicles with minor changes in specifications to keep up with the latest improvements in technology. Thanks to its incredible engine, the Aventador LP700-4 was able to go from 0 to 100 km per hour in only 2.9 seconds and 0 to 161 km per hour in 6.4 seconds while reaching a maximum speed of up to 350 km an hour. Its arrival was celebrated as a game-changer in the supercar market, but the Lamborghini Auto brand was only just getting started. Two years after the success of the LP700-4, the Aventador 700-4 Roadster was touted out of Lamborghini's production line. The Roadster shared the same engine as the original LP700-4, but was only able to reach a speed of 97 km per hour, or 60 miles per hour. In the same 2.9 seconds, it took the original to reach 100 kilometers. Despite this difference, the two cars still shared the same top speed of 350 kilometers an hour, or 217 miles per hour. The Roadster was also equipped with a retractable roof made up of two carbon fiber panels, which can be stored in the front luggage compartment. It famously features a one-of-a-kind engine cover and an attachable wind deflector to optimize cabin circulation at high speeds, as well as a gloss black treatment on the A pillars. A brand new Aventador series was launched in 2015. First, the Aventador Super Veloce LP750-4, and then, soon after, the Aventador Super Veloce LP750-4 Roadster. They were unveiled at the 2015 Geneva Motor Show and featured an upgrade to the V12 engine of the LP700-4. The maximum power output increased to 750 PS, generating 552 kilowatts and 740 horsepower, compared to the earlier 700 PS, which could only manage 515 kilowatts and 690 horsepower. They also featured improvements to the front splitter and rear diffuser, as well as a new fixed CFRP rear wing that improved the aerodynamics of the car by increasing down speed by 180% compared to the original Aventador LP700-4. As expected, this made the Super Veloce LP slightly faster, as it was able to reach speeds of 100 km an hour in 2.8 seconds, one tenth of a second faster than older models. It also was able to exceed the 350 kilometers of the older models as well. The Roadster released a year later bore a great resemblance to the original, save for its own retractable roof, which retreated into the trunk of the car when needed. In the same year that the Aventador Super Veloce LP750-4 was released to the market, the company also launched the Aventador SLP740-4 to an eager audience while managing a better experience than their first two models. Using the framework from the LP700-4, they improved the design of the vehicle thanks to their head of design, Mitya Borkert, who enhanced the car's look with a sleeker, more robust exterior that still showed the swagger and smooth nature of the Aventador's before it. The Aventador SLP740-4 series 
also pioneered Lamborghini's Lamborghini Dinamica Vecolo Activa control unit for improved suspension and was also the first Aventador to have permanent four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering. The LDVA suspension system came with four modes, the Sport, the Strada, the Corsa, and the Ego. The next major Aventador model to be released by Lamborghini was the Aventador Superveloce J. The super fast car, as the name suggests, once held the record for the fastest lap time around the Nürburgring Nordschleife, with a remarkable lap time of 6.44.97, with a reworked 6.5 liter L539 V12 engine that generates a maximum power output of 770 PS, 566 kilowatts, and 759 horsepower. The Aventador SVJ was able to reach 100 kilometers an hour in under 2.8 seconds and had a top speed of 219 kilometers an hour, making it the fastest Aventador in production at the time of its release. In addition to this, the SVJ was also the first V12-enabled Lamborghini car to feature its groundbreaking Aerodinamica Lamborghini Attiva ALA system that made it even more aerodynamic than previous models. The addition of aerodynamic components such as a disconnected front splitter, tridimensional air outlet on the bonnet, a large carbon fiber rear wing with a central fin, as well as an underbody aero design with vortex generators and a large rear diffuser, helped the vehicle record a 40% greater downforce compared to the SV LP750-4, as well as a 1% reduction in its drag coefficient. The Super Veloce J featured a Roadster version like all its predecessors. This Roadster also has a retractable roof made up of two carbon fiber pieces that retreat to its rear when needed. The latest in the line of mainstream Aventadores, if you can really call an Aventador mainstream, is the 2021 Aventador LP780-4 Ultima, which was launched on Lamborghini's own channel. The reason why we cannot consider this car mainstream is because only 600 pieces were ever made in total, 350 coupes and 250 roadsters, making it an extreme rarity when it comes to Aventadores and supercars in general. Rumored to be the last Aventador, it is capable of producing a maximum output of 780 PS, 574 kilowatts, and 769 horsepower, while also having 720 newton meters or 531 foot-pounds of torque. The LP780-4 Ultima takes the cake as the current fastest Aventador on the market and can reach 0 to 100 kilometers in only 2.8 seconds, while reaching a top speed of 356 kilometers per hour faster than any car mentioned so far. Along with its flagship cars, Lamborghini also produced several special edition Aventadors, which it routinely added to its catalog, such as the Aventador J, which was presented at the 2012 Geneva Motor Show without a functioning radio or air conditioner in an attempt to keep the car light. The Aventador Dreamliner Edition was released that same year, and a few months into 2013, the Aventador LP720-4 50th Anniversario was also presented at the Shanghai Motor Show as a way of commemorating the 50th anniversary of Automobili Lamborghini with a 50th anniversary emblem in forged composite carbon fiber gracing the hood of the vehicle. It was soon followed by the Aventador Airport Vehicle which incidentally had a follow me inscription on the back of the car and served as a guide car for aircraft at the airport. A special Aventador Pirelli edition of the LP700-4 car was also released in 2014 to mark the long-standing relationship between Lamborghini and Pirelli, which was 50 years strong at the time. The 2016 Aventador Miura homage was, as the name suggests, a nod in the direction of the legendary Lamborghini Miura, which had hit the market in 1966. Only 50 of these special edition cars were ever made, and they fittingly bore a Mura 50th logo on the seats. Three special editions SVJs were also produced, bearing an extra signage of 63. They were the Aventador SVJ 63, Aventador SVJ 63 Roadster, and Aventador SVJ 63 Roadster Zago editions, all paying homage to the formation of Automobili Lamborghini in 1963. There have also been other Lamborghini vehicles modeled after the Aventador with the Venino, Centenario, SC18 Alston, Essenza SCV12, SC20, and most notably, Kuntach LPI 800-4, all taking inspiration from the legendary designs and stylings of the Raging Bull. The era of the Aventador might be coming to an end, but there's no denying it was one of the most dominant supercars of its time.
time and will go down in history as one of the all-time greats in Lamborghini's history. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out our channel for more supercar stories.